Hi, it's Ray from Pro Shaper. We had a class this weekend and uh, we only got two videos out last week, but we hope to do a little bit better this week. We de-rusted the uh, 150 door, Jaguar 150 door, and we only did half at a time. Uh, I wish it came out a little bit better. There's still a little residue here, but most of this is going to be cut off. We'll probably dip it one more time once we get it apart. So. What we're going to do now is decide what we're going to do. So I wanted to just discuss some general terms of how to approach this and so the definitions of it. So this is a collector car. Uh, they made, I believe, about uh, 10 or 12,000 or 15, maybe 14,000 of these when they were new. And they were always prized from day one all the XK series, the 120, the 140, and the 150. And the survival rate is probably pretty high. It might be as much as 70%. Uh, That's sort of a guess on my part, but there's a lot of them out there. And they've been con uh, consistently improving in value. And the 150S, which has the three carburetor motor on it, Roadster is generally considered to be the most valuable one. Uh, some of the 120 uh, alloy ones are actually more valuable, but those are all hand built. These were stamp cars, pressed steel made the, the bodies on them. And uh, most of the, well, the 120s and 140s generally had aluminum doors with few exceptions. All the 150s had steel doors. And this door had, like we talked before in part one, there's, there's at least a dozen little dings in this door and there's considerable rust here. For some reason it rusted through right in here and they had bondoed that full and it rusted out on the bottom here. So the question is, what do you do when you have a car like this? How do you, how do you uh, go about solving the problems? Well, it's gonna take considerable time to, to smooth this door all out and a lot of people would cut this off and make a complete new skin. But part of this video content that I want to show is being able to take dents out in hard to get at places. And a lot of the dents are up in the upper portion of this door and they're over in here and it is difficult to get in, uh, into there. There's a anti-drumming uh, support that goes through the middle of the door. It's held in by two little uh, quarter inch bolts. Hopefully we can get those out, take that out. And because this is rusted so bad here and rusted over here, it might make sense just to make a lower third skin, weld it right here where we have really good access. We have to replace this kick panel here anyways. This is all rusted through. So the first order of business would be to take this kick panel off and then we're going to make a pattern so that we have a, uh, a good plan to make this, this panel. And this panel has a radius value here and a different radius value here. This one's a tighter radius and that's more of an open radius. So what I wanted to say about the definitions of what we're doing is there's uh, three ways of approaching this and one would be uh, repair, the other would be restoration, and the other would be coach work. So this has other damage besides the skin. As we mentioned before, both the shut panel is beat up a little bit right in here. It's all, all beat up. Now if we take this lower skin pot portion off in this kick panel, we'll be able to straighten that out. There's sandwich rust in here. Now sandblasting wouldn't take it out and most dipping processes won't take it out. But we're going to be cutting this bottom third off and that will eliminate that problem. If we save this panel, we're going to use navel jelly and remove all that uh, residual sandwich rust or make a new piece there. The same with this hinge panel. This gets beat up on all the, the XK doors and it looks like there's a crack there and there's a reinforcer in there and uh, we're going to we're gonna have to investigate that once we uh, get this further apart. So 
there's a lot to be done here. So if you approached it from the coach work perspective and you wanted to make a pristine, almost like brand new door, you would make a brand new door. That means use this as a model and make everything brand new. There's, there's a lot of time there and you'd end up with a, a, a door as good as the factory if you measured everything properly and did all the little detail work. Now generally that's not the practice on a car like this because it's uh, not a 20 million dollar Ferrari or something. It could be worth anywhere from like 100,000 to 300,000 restored and uh, there's plenty of money to have the door reproduced but it'd be an expensive piece to make this entire door. There's a lot of hours to make it all because you have to reverse engineer everything and there's a lot of these parts that although they were surface rusted um, they're it, it not really mutilated or anything so they're salvageable. So now we look at it from the restoration perspective and if we do it from the restoration perspective we've got two potentials. One is changing out this bottom third which eliminates all the sandwich rust potential down here and we just have to put one weld seam in and the other and to take out these dents we'll have access to get a dolly in there and take out all these dents. The other would be to do a partial skin and bring it up to here and, and then we could do a full skin which would mean taking this cap off and making this piece or bringing it to about an inch from there. So all of those would be acceptable restoration uh, uh, solutions to the problems that this door exhibits. Now if we were doing it for repair, so say the car was a uh, car that was only worth maybe ten thousand dollars all done and we have this rot problem and we potentially have a hinge problem that's getting worse here. Uh, what a lot of people do with repair is they'll make a small patch panel for just those isolated spots and oftentimes um, they will MIG weld a patch in uh, because they don't, might not have good access to the back side and then if anything's high they'll have to shrink it in or pound it in and then they bondo skim it. It looks really good but it's really not uh, a really high quality uh, fix. It's not bringing the car back to what it was in, in when it was new. It's more just making the car presentable and usable. So what I always try to teach in my classes is if the car is worth it definitely spend the time and work with uh, with at least a restoration perspective and uh, if you have a, a collector car and you're missing a door and you can't get a door anywhere and that's happened to me in the past I did a 35 packet V12 and the door was completely missing and it was a, a, a Sport Phaeton V12 packet there was no door so, but the, the other door was there the passenger door was there driver's door was missing. There's no way you're going to find one of those so we made it, I reverse engineered the other door and made a complete door and that's coach building, building everything. Let's go forward, uh, we'll take this and I'm going to put a line on here where I'm going to cut it and we'll do uh, as much as we can I like to try to keep the videos in the 45 minute to an hour timeline on them. Let's take and mark this up where we're going to cut it. Want to get up high enough here. And we're going to put that line right there. So using a straight edge I put a super fine uh, magic marker line in and now I've enhanced it with some 1 8 inch blue vinyl tape. It's a lot easier to see it. All my cut lines or any pertinent lines I always put with the blue tape. It's just so much easier to see them. I'll burnish that down so it won't move on me. And the next order of business is we'll take that kick panel out because the door skin actually goes under the kick panel. There's a bunch of pop rivets. Yes, Jaguar used pop rivets. Uh, I think they're a World War II innovation. So there's a lot of pop rivets on 
Jaguars. And years ago, like I said, at my grandfather's, uh, when we had something like this dipped, if it had any aluminum on it, and these are aluminum pop rivets, it would totally dissolve in the tank. So that was sort of a, a bad thing. Uh, that Rust 911 doesn't dissolve aluminum or any other metal. It actually cleans them really nice. We'll drill these pop rivets out. And I believe there's a couple little wells we got to cut, and that will reveal everything. I believe there's a couple pop uh, spot wells up in here. And there's some spot welding in here too, I believe. I'm gonna see if I can find those spot wells and then we'll drill those out. And I'll show you a little trick on those spot wells. I'm gonna take a rotary wire brush and wire brush so I can reveal those spot wells a little better. There might be a couple in here. There's one here, there's a little tab that comes around and catches right there. And there's, it's hard to identify them because the rust is so, uh, screwed up the surface so much here. So there's probably three on either side. So that'd be six, seven, eight, uh, and 10, at least 10 spot wells. So I'll get set up and uh, I'll do one. See if I can find it's one that's really revealed here. Try to mark them where I think they are. Now, there's a bunch of different ways to, to knock out the spot wells. Uh, Blair makes that nice little hole saw, the mini hole saw. And I find those work really good, but the, the teeth break off really easy and they're expensive. So what I generally use is just um, either a good old drill that's got good steel in it. I, I sharpen it like an end mill or I use an actual end mill that I resharpen. Let's see if I got any of those in here. Here's one here. The end mills are cobalt or whatever. They're really pretty strong. And I don't care about this, so I'm gonna waste that away. Now you can drill them out with uh, something like this or you can take and erode them with a carbide ball burr and I probably will use that too. So we'll have to fight with one. Uh, we won't film the whole spot weld removing, that's a little dull. But let's see if we can get one out and uh, then we will uh, do the other ones off camera, get that piece out, and then we'll make the patent for that skin. And well, even while we're here, let's see if we can get this uh, anti-drum support piece out. See if this turns. It's got a little quarter inch, I think, fine thread bolt in there. Lo and behold, it's turning. It's like a California car almost after being in that uh, Rust 911. Yeah, they're coming out by, by my fingers. Yeah, well, not all the way. There we go. We'll get a little pry bar and see if we can pry that out. Yeah mess with that later it's mechanically locked in there but it will come out they made them really long and they're biting on the uh, shut and the and the hinge panel but they see they put uh, a, a felt in there which holds moisture and there's a lot of rust there so we might have to redo our plan and come up even further if that's really uh, perforated bad or, or almost through so replace that instead of putting the felt which holds the moisture you can put a uh, closed cell foam in there glue that on and then you won't have that moisture retention problem so let's do one spot weld on camera and then see how we make out with that now they, they 
common practice in auto body shops now is to use a, a belt sander and just erode that away. We'll bring one over too, put a new belt on it. So we'll try a bunch of different things and we'll see what works good for us. This is so difficult to determine where the spot wells are. So I might just uh, erode it away here and then let's see, let's see how this belt sander works. That's working pretty nice. I gotta get a hammer and open that up a little bit. Let me go get a ball peen. The problem is I'm totally blind here. I can't see where the the spot wells were because it was so rusted there. There was no evidence of the the little spot well depression. Nothing. It's not giving up. Doesn't even show any uh, weakening. It's probably right there, huh? Maybe. No. Well, we'll grind some more. Not releasing at all. Struck out. All right, because the uh, spot wells are so blind, I don't want to spend a, an hour trying to keep, take these spot wells out uh, because they'll end up re ruining everything anyway. So uh, I have another one of these panels which I can measure because I'm going to reproduce this panel anyways. And if I didn't have that other panel, I would take a pair of dividers and get all these measurements and I would make a, a flat out plan for uh, side view plan for this whole thing with all the complete measurements. I would uh, measure very carefully. I use uh, dividers to get the small measurements and then I'll use trammel points to get the long measurements. Very um, inaccurate to use a tape measure. You can use a scale but trammel points work really good. So I would make a paper pattern of that all unfolded with a plan of how the bends go. But I'll do that after because I do have a, a, another one or a, hanging around the shop here. So what I'm going to do instead is these are all released here because the pop rivets were holding them. I'm just going to cut this through like this, release this piece. You can take the air saw and just cut through here like this and then break it into sections and you can actually snap off those spot rivet uh, wells one at a time. So we'll uh, get the cut off wheel and cut that out of there. That side's free. So there's a panel in there. Let me get a, a good pry bar and get that anti-drumming support out. Easy say, no easy do. This way. There we go. There we go. 
out. Uh, so that got all wet from the de-rusting. This will have to be put in the de-ruster again. And uh, that will all be perfect when we're done with that. This will get reproduced with closed cell foam. Let's try one uh, cutting with the air saw through here and then we'll try to twist that off with a pair of pliers. Now if there's only one spot weld there, that twist right off. There might be two. Oh boy. <laughs> it just doesn't want to give up. Try cutting that in half. There might be two in there. There you go. There was two there. There's one. And there might be three there. <laughs> that bugger just doesn't want to give up. All right, so we'll grind that one down. But that's the, the deal. There's a... Uh, Spot welds can be a real pain and take a lot of time and you got to try not to get into the parent metal. This is all have to be de-rusted de now That's uh, uh, unless we replace that. But you see we got a, a reinforcer panel. These were all rusted up before but now they are free. And usually the bottom ones are the worst so there's no preparation so that might be salvageable. Uh, once we get the the skin off. So the next order of business is we'll make a patent for that skin and then we'll cut that skin off. You can see now I can easily get up in there with my arm to to do the uh, dolly work that we need to do. We're gonna have to de-rust it once more. Uh, we're gonna need one more dose. This was pretty heavily rusted in the inside, a lot worse than I thought. That's usually the case. Any, any type of rust, uh, restoration uh, process is de-rustoration more than restoration and uh, it's always worse than you thought. There's Bondo when you didn't think there was Bondo, there's rust when you didn't think there was rust. So the the bad news just keeps coming, especially if you send it off to a restoration shop, the, the bill just keeps going up and up and up. This is why I advocate for coach building, because you can build with all brand new stuff and if you do it with aluminum body, you don't have to worry about all this rust demon. So, we'll, we'll uh, block this up with a block of wood and we'll make a nice paper pattern so we get a real accurate uh, measurement of this and we're going to make some gauges here for this radius and we'll we'll take a, a patent off the the end like this and the end on this one too on paper. Alright one of my volunteers Jim I think he eats a his family eats a uh, box of Cheerios or all these other cereals every day so he, he comes up every week with boxes and uh, empty boxes of, of Cheerios and all the other the kinds of cereals he eats and it's a really nice uh, paper for patents so that's the idea he brings those up and it helps the shop which is great so I'm going to use the uh, nice little Milwaukee super fine pen hold that up there like that And then I'm going to make a registration mark right there, right where I'm cutting it off. Right there, and this is the front, so I'll label that the front. 
and then we'll do the same thing on the back here. So the more measurements that you make, it makes your job so much easier. Uh, one of the amazing things about restoration is you're doing a 30s car with wood inner structure and uh, the, the inner structure is all gone. Uh, you take the skins off, the skins are all tacked on. You got to take, uh, just like spot wells, you have to take hundreds of these little uh, wood tacks out carefully without wrecking the skins and then you have to unpeel the whole body, take that skin off, and now you have just this wood in a structure with a whole bunch of bracketry that they made. Some of it's cast, some of it's forged, and you have to take all the screws out of that, and usually a lot of the screws are loose and rusted and hard to come out because the heads are uh, broken. And uh, if you take that wood in a structure away, you had a car, and then, you know, three or four hours or a day later, You've got a bunch of sheet metal that's kind of rusted on the bottom and it's laying on the floor and, and you've got a whole pile of pieces of the of the body and there's no there's no car anymore it disappeared so when you do a job like that you have to do uh, really crazy documentation otherwise you can get lost really easy so let's make the paper patent for this right now going to use some magnets and hold that on there. There's no crown in this panel. This panel might have about a sixteenth of an inch of crown that's supposed to be in there. It's mostly a roll. These uh, shut panels and, and uh, hinge panels are designed to have a little bit of roundness to them and that's how they get some strength in it by putting this little tiny radius in the up and down uh, axis here. So we'll put that on there. That on there. And we'll put a witness mark in. I only got is this six foot ruler, so I'll use that right now. One witness mark whenever you put a panel on, not 12, not 2, not 4, 1. One witness mark. So then, uh, I think I'll just take a razor blade and I'm going to run it right on there. Bring the... Get this tight against it with the magnets. We sell these nice magnets in the... Uh, uh, ProShaper.com store. They're pretty powerful magnets. I don't know how much they'll pick up. Let's see. Oh, there we go. It'll hold the hammer. Pretty strong. So let me get a razor blade and I'm going to cut that. All right. So I'm marking it uh, top and front here, rear. So I got an index line. Always, uh, if you're going to use the patent ever again, that's the 150 lower door skin. And we're going to take that razor and run that carefully. Alright, so there's a pattern for the skin. And next step is taking that skin off. So I'm going to cut the, uh, the flange right here. Actually, I should put a new blade in. Let me get a new blade in there.
Now this has a bunch of spot wells on it too. It is like five or six, uh, eight spot wells on each each flange here. So that's going to be a bear to get off. I think I might just cut it out of there. Instead of uh, using the cutoff wheel, I'm going to try just cutting it right out with the cordless shears. Then I'll deal with these spot welded parts, and and I'll I'll do a fine cut later. I'm going to do a rough cut right now. Just rough cut the whole thing out here. So there's uh, exhibit A. It uh, was rusted pretty bad there. Now we'll cut close to that line, but I'll grind it right to the line to get a precision cut. What needs to happen now is uh, I'll fine tune that line with a little grinder. I, go, I must have budged, bugged up the uh, tape here, so I'll fix that. The magic marker line is still there. And I'll have to slowly but sure uh, take all of this out to reveal these ends. And now we'll be able to re-dip this. And I'll probably dip it like that in a small tank and let that sit for a good amount of time to totally get all of that rust as much as possible. It'll go inside these tubes and remove all the rust and do a really good job. And uh, do the same thing on the other end. These are all nice and free. There's a little bit of rust in the retainer. These. This retainer holds these in. These have to be cleaned out with a, a tap, but there's no broken bolts in there, which is good. Usually there's a broken bolt. These are free up here too, that's good. And like usually this is all rusted really bad, so there's uh, some heavy rust there, but it's all manageable. We'll take that remainder of this lower skin off before we dip it again. We'll dip this where the barrier was, and it's all still rusted under there pretty bad. That little anti-rattler piece there. And uh, the next thing we'll do is to get all that rusting, de-rusting going on, but we'll make the skin probably in the next uh, installment of this door repair. We'll make the uh, kick panel and the skin while the door is getting the final stages of de-rusting. So I think that's it from now. I don't want to go two hours with this. If we go further, we'll have to have uh, just too much time invested in it. So thanks for watching. Uh, this is a restoration segment on how to repair a, a door that's uh, been batted a little bit and rusted some. And I hope you learned something. It's Ray from Pro Shaper. Please uh, subscribe, tell your friends. We're growing the channel. Um, comment, give us the likes, and thanks for all your support. And remember, metal is clay.